All right, welcome to Aviary Lab 2. We're going to be creating and using a, an image of, uh, particularly I'm using an image of an actress and a texture that I've downloaded online. We're going to combine those two to kind of make kind of a poster uh, for for that for that person that for the the portrait that I had downloaded. So uh, let's get going. We're going to kick in Aviary. I've actually already logged in. As you see on the screen here, you'll see uh, I've got it says Welcome to the page, which is my username. Um, if I go down, it'll actually show we've got some spheres, and yours should look very similar to mine in terms of you should have the spheres that you you've created from the previous lab. So we're ready to go. I am going to go to uh, create and fire up Phoenix and give that a quick second. Let me shrink that window down a little bit so you can see everything. Looks like that's good right there. And what I've done, actually, let me minimize. Let me show you. I'll go through this real quick. What I did was I went to Google Images and I downloaded two images in particular. And I wanted to make sure that I got the right sizes. So I went to Images first. And you'll have to do this. Go to Google Images for yourself. And what I did was I put in rock wall texture into Google Images. And I came up with all these textures. And I think I grabbed one of these. Uh, if you click on one, like I look on this one, this one's 1024 by 682. I kind of wanted something that was big enough to be able to work with. So go grab your own texture. It doesn't have to be a rock wall. Uh, can be burlap, can be any kind of texture you think, but Google Images does a great job of allowing you to go get some images that uh, you should be able to use. This is a good one. Uh, this this pattern images, pattern designs image gallery, because it's got all kinds of textures that you can use. So that's the first thing you need to go download is some kind of a texture, and you want something that's big enough. Probably anything higher than 800 pixels wide will work for you. Uh, the next thing I did was. I actually went in and said, okay, who do I want a portrait picture of? And I was thinking about what kinds of portrait pictures work. And you can use yourself if you'd like. You can use, uh, I figured most artists, uh, not artists, but actors or actresses have those headshots that that uh, that are used, that work so well within this picture. So I said, all right, so who's my favorite actress? I threw in Kate Beckinsale. And then I came up with all these pictures and I actually picked this picture right here. So what you'll see is, you know, again, actors, actresses, if you want to do something like that, again, keep it clean. I don't want to see uh, any anything other than somebody's head in the picture, quite honestly. So uh, if you do choose to use a female, don't use a picture like this or something that has some kind of a kind of a questionable look to it. But Kate's got uh, quite a few pictures here. So. I picked this one. This one was a good one. You'll see it when I pull it up in Aviary, but I downloaded that one. So you basically, before we even start, you're going to actually grab two two pictures. One of them is a texture of some format, and the other one is uh, a portrait picture of somebody. Again, it could be anybody. I just went with an actress because I know they, they have a, a better selection of shots that are just their face. So that's that's why I grabbed those two. So here we are. We're in Aviary. I am going to pull up Phoenix again. Here we go. There's Phoenix. And I'm ready to go. I got my screen ready to go. Um, let me resize this just a little bit because I'm actually getting some. So there's, uh, there's Phoenix in my window. So last time in the first lab, we started with Start From Scratch, which gave us a blank slate to work from. This time, we're actually going to start with the Load an Image file. So I'm going to click on that. And I am going to browse. And it's going to pull up my uh, directory that I'm going to look for. I'm actually, I got an aviary folder on my desktop. And there's my lab two folder. And there are my two pictures that I downloaded. So first things first, I'm actually going to start with the texture, which is my rock wall that I used. And I click on that and I say upload. And it's going to upload that file. And there's my texture. Let me view. We'll zoom out a little bit so that you can see the whole entire texture. Oops, a little bit too much. So uh, there's my zoom. Let me slide on that. We'll make it a little bit smaller. I was at 60, 10 percent. Ain't gonna work. Let me go in there and type in. Actually, 50 percent. We'll keep right there. That'll look good. So there's my rock wall, and I'm gonna rename the layer rock 
texture. So there's my rock wall. And then I'm going to go ahead and I am going to file and I'm going to import a file. And I'm going to choose my file. And here comes my actress Kate Beckinsale. So I'm going to open that up, upload file. And give that a quick second. And there's my other texture right there. I shouldn't say texture, but my other uh, my other image that I wanted to put in this picture. You notice one is bigger than the other. Sometimes when you import, and you may see this on yours, but you may get a dialog box from Aviary saying, one file that you're importing is bigger or smaller than the other one. What do you want to do? And what I, what I typically have done for me is I've always taken the biggest picture first, which again, I knew was my texture wall. And then I've resized my portrait in order to fit the textured, uh, whatever texture layer I tried to use. So I'm going to rename this layer because again, you want to rename your layers all the time. I'm going to call this one Kate. And I got my, I've got uh, my two pictures up and going. So first thing we're going to do is again, we're going to try to make this, this kind of mon not a montage, but kind of a textured, uh, almost like a graffiti ish kind of piece to it. So what I want to do is I want to strip out the color of the picture. If you are fortunate enough to select a picture that was black and white, you're good to go. Um, I did not. So I'm going to go over to image and I am going to make sure I'm on the, the, your, your portrait layer, whichever one that is. And I'm going to go to image and I am going to go to desaturate. And as I look at the picture, it is not desaturating. There we go. So I go to image desaturate and I end up with my image becoming a black and white image, which quite honestly, I love black and white images. They're, they're just so, there's so much detail in them and it creates a totally different feel than a color image. So there's Kate with my uh, black and white image going on there. I am going to add some what's called jitter to this and you'll see what jitter does in a second. So jitter is done differently than desaturate. Again, desaturate was found in the image menu. We're going to come back to the image menu in a quick second. All right, so we're going to add some jitter to this picture. Uh, and jitter is found up in the filters effects. You'll see there's all kinds of other effects here. The one we're going to use right in the middle is called jitter. Some of these should look familiar to you from Photoshop Emboss. Uh, is a combination with Photoshop Bevel and Emboss. You've got some blur. You've got some sharpen. Find edges is pretty cool. So let's go to jitter. And you'll notice that as you increase the jitter value, if you look at your picture, the minute you say, so let, I'll, I'll do something extreme, we'll go up to 10, which is the most jitter you can use. I click on apply and you'll see it kind of granulates the picture, making it look a little rough, a little too much, I think. Um, so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to go back to jitter. And so 10 was a little too much. So I think six is a good a good number to go with. I click apply and you'll see it kind of, if you look in her hair, it kind of granulized. It makes it very grainy, a grainy type idea. So that's a good piece going on there. So we've got the jitter going. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to try to mess around with some, uh, some highlights and some undertones of the picture to make it look a little bit darker. So I am going to go over to the image menu and I am going to choose levels and you'll notice the adjust levels is here and it gives you kind of a thumbnail as to what you're doing. Um, all of these sliders, you've got a left slider, you've got a right slider and a middle slider. And what we're going to do is I'm going to bring the left to about 75 and what this is, if you'll see once, once you'll see in the picture, you'll see it darkens the picture. I'm going to bring the mid to about 102. And these are all numbers that, that just kind of we've messed, I've messed with a little bit just to see what it looks like. And I know that this looks good. And then the right, we're going to pull over to 157. So it basically kind of crunches all of those levels together and gives you a very, very, very grainy uh, outlook to the picture. Um, not liking the, the uh, detail in the nose. So I'm going to mess around with the middle a little bit. Let me just pull this back. Give me a little bit of detail back. 
Yeah, it's pretty good. I tend to lose a little bit of her nose because it's not really that defined in the picture when I mess around with the mids. Um, but if I pull the rights way back, it'll give me more on the highlight side of things. So you'll have to mess with yours a little bit. I uh, There we go. That's pretty good right there. We'll keep that right there. So what did I end with? I ended with 75 on the left, a 113 in the middle, and 162 on the right. So I go ahead and I click OK there, and it's going to apply that that effect to my picture. So there we go. So the picture looks pretty good. It looks pretty rough and pretty edgy. Um, I keep in mind I've got the rock texture underneath it, uh, and I also have the, the first layer that we started with. I'm going to go into blend mode, and again, making sure I'm, the, I'm on the portrait. And the blend mode you want to choose is uh, let's look first we'll go with multiply and see what this does and what you'll notice is the rock face or, or uh, I'm sorry the the portrait layer will blend into the rock face and I really don't like the way this looks to be honest with you because quite honestly I can barely see um, the uh, the portrait above it so I'm gonna have to tone down let me tone down the rock texture a little bit I'm gonna go to layer there I'm sorry image levels and what I'm going to do is try to tone down the uh, the uh, rock texture a little bit. I'm going to try to actually make it a little bit lighter. There we go. So we're going to pull the rock texture up a little bit. Give it a little bit less color and a little less depth. I'm probably going to end up desaturating that too as well. So I click OK. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. And I want more of my picture. So I'm going to go back to the blend mode here. And no, nope, we don't want to do that. Let's go back to multiply. Multiply seems to be the one that works the best. And I'm going to pull the alpha down of my rocks a little bit. So I get to see a little bit more of Kate. So I'm pulling the uh, opacity level down of my rock texture in the background. Let me desaturate the rock background as well. Okay. So I'm looking pretty good there. Um, I'm also going to add a color. Let's, uh, let's add a color overlay to this and see what this looks like too as well. So we've got... Uh, another layer we can create another layer here so I'm gonna create one new layer I'm actually gonna make sure it's over I was on the wrong layer when I did it so I'm gonna pull my portrait layer down underneath come on there we go and I'm gonna call this color overlay I'm going to pick a color, definitely not going to be black. I'm going to go to web so I can kind of figure out which one I want. And I'm going to kind of look for a, uh, that's a pinkish, I'm trying to look for a tannish, it has a good kind of orangish tannish color. Go. I'm going to try to go up more towards a creamish, kind of, there we go. Looking for kind of a light, light tan kind of thing, kind of feel to it. So we'll go there. Call that OK. And then I'm going to choose the paint bucket, which is next to the gradient tool. That's my shapes tool. There's the paint bucket right there. Make sure I'm on the paint bucket. And I'm going to make sure I'm on the color overlay bucket. And I'm going to throw a whole color overlay on that. And then what I'm going to do is go to the blend mode which is kinda of what this chapter is all about and I'm gonna to go to the overlay blend mode there you go and then you actually start to see a little bit of color fill in you got a little bit of the rock texture going behind you which is kinda of cool um, at this point I am gonna stop right here let me crop this image real quick so that I can get rid of the rest of the walk the rock wall let me get in here and create a selection rectangle of just Kate just your portrait. So I select that and then I'll go to image and crop selection. And there's just a picture right there. 
So I'm good to go here. We'll stop right here. We're going to add, come back and add some text features and a couple of uh, dynamic kind of boxes to it as well.